If you've spent any time reading and learning about memory improvement techniques, you've probably heard the name Giordano Bruno. That's a very good thing because every serious memory practitioner can learn a ton from this incredible Renaissance memory master and philosopher. But a lot of people find his books hard to understand. Me too, though perhaps I have a bit of an advantage thanks to a peculiar mindset I've noticed a lot of people either aren't willing to adopt or don't know about. As we talked about in our series, Exposing the Dark Side of So-Called Speed Reading, I simply don't require myself to understand while reading. I read so that I might understand and treat understanding as a process with no end. That said, some people will have a distinct advantage while reading Bruno, and here are a few reasons which provide clues for how you might enjoy more traction from his powerful memory training books. First, Bruno is breaking from Aristotelian traditions, and if you don't understand those references, it can be hard to follow the plot. In fact, such references can feel like a cloud that stands between you and the meaning of the text. Plus, Bruno assumes you know not only Aristotle, but also Platonic and Neoplatonic conventions, allowing him to make a number of shortcuts and references. And let's be frank, Bruno also innovates on those philosophical concepts in ways that contemporary people who just want to improve their memory aren't always interested in. I'd encourage you to get interested in those ideas for the great brain exercise and personal development of a moral compass based on substantial understanding of advanced ethics they can provide. But when push comes to shove, it's hard to see how those ideas are going to help you use memory techniques better. So just understand as you read him that a huge part of what is going on in Bruno is him showing you how these techniques can be used so that you might remember and better understand those precious philosophical ideas because you've considered them from within memory. Finally, there's no getting around the fact that Bruno wrote for a very different kind of reader in a very different time. Various poetic, literary, and scientific conventions of his era means understanding him is definitely a challenge. Sentences are long and contain multiple clauses, and you often have to read backwards to tie various thoughts together. Bruno's radical dedication to science also places a burden on the reader because he essentially insists that you not only understand science, but practice it yourself. If you're not doing the science of memory, there is little chance of connecting with either the big picture or granular ideas he provides. Fortunately, reading Bruno is still a rewarding journey at almost every step. I cannot imagine a single person alive who would not benefit from knowing their Plato and Aristotle. So Bruno's philosophical ideas do emerge meaningfully for you. And the best part is that knowing those ideas will help you improve your memory. So to help make sure you can enjoy and benefit from Giordano Bruno as much as I have, in this video I offer you five suggestions that will help you understand Bruno better and milk his memory training suggestions for all they are worth. And rest assured, their value is priceless for the serious practitioner of our precious memory arts. And by the way, if you're new here, this is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com inviting you to get subscribed and for the love of memory, hit that thumbs up to help our community train the robots that humans still care about the ancient memory tradition. Let's get started. Although I'm sure most of us can pick up a great deal from these books without too much external reading, it is useful to know who Bruno was and why he mattered. If you're really struggling to understand what he's talking about, additional context will be essential. Unfortunately, there's no perfect starting point. And in a weird twist of fate, some of the best books for getting context are factually incorrect about many of Bruno's core intentions. For example, I highly recommend you read The Art of Memory by Francis Yates yet you'll want to perform some due diligence on her many claims about Bruno. This is important because there are problems with associating Bruno with Hermeticism that I have commented on in our new Art of Memory playlist. Now, when I talk about Bruno's core intentions, this in itself is problematic. Like everyone on planet Earth, Bruno's thinking and his memory training evolved over time. Ideas change, terminology changes, and these changes lead to apparent or real contradictions, not to mention points of debate and confusions that aren't ever getting sorted out. But you can develop foundations, and again, simply by taking steps to know your Plato, Aristotle, and at least something about the Neoplatonic trends, this information will help you understand the philosophical angles and ideas which really bring Bruno's mnemonic examples to life. So although Yates makes some obvious blunders because she did not try to use any of Bruno's techniques, she does usefully explain and contextualize the method of loci that supports the vast majority of Bruno's innovations. 
I also recommend you read Hilary Gatti's books on Bruno as well as Michael White's The Pope and The Heretic. Then, with all this context in your mind, keeping in mind that there is no perfect starting point with Bruno, dive into reading him. If I had to pick one text for beginners, perhaps Seal of Seals is best. To help explain some of its finest lessons for the serious practitioner of the memory arts, check out part one of the playlist we're watching now in our community's video called Ars Combinatoria. Bruno shares a ton of mnemonic examples throughout his memory books. He also encodes how his images can be used in some of the poems included throughout his books. For example, if you have Song of Circe, Bruno has encoded what I call the magnetic modes in the opening poem. These multi-sensory tools of encoding are hidden, literally in plain sight, yet usefully obvious to those who know the techniques. Why does Bruno disguise such material? Well, I don't know for sure, but Yeats thinks Bruno was addressing audiences who already knew the memory tradition well and was providing them with next level guidance. He was saving time and space by using literary conventions of his era and stimulating what he assumed to be a sophisticated audience. But there's something even more important, which is that real teachers know that it's not what students are given that matters. It's what students earn that makes all the difference in the world. And Bruno is very fine at making sure you earn what he has to teach, indeed. That said, he's also extraordinarily generous and humorous about the strange puzzle of why some people get it and some people don't. Throughout his writings, Bruno expresses confusion about how so many people try to understand his teaching rather than simply applying it. This technique can be understood, but the understanding comes from the doing based on the reading and never from reading alone. I've quoted some of these passages in other videos, like the one on Ars Combinatoria, so will myself spare the time now knowing you to be sophisticated students yourselves who are anxious to earn what you know. But the point is that memory techniques are not a spectator sport. They are more like a martial art that requires constant study and practice. You cannot learn much by observing what others do or even what they say they do in the memory arts because knowledge comes from being in the dojo and practicing the moves yourself. To be clear, and obnoxiously repetitive on purpose for those who have time to complain, ultimate knowledge of how to practice the moves comes from making the moves. Whether you fail or succeed is irrelevant because both outcomes provide much needed data. This is again a science that requires you to be the scientist, and that's why later you can read a poem from Bruno and see the magnetic modes leaping out at you. And don't facepalm because you never saw it all along. You just hadn't earned it. No big deal, we've all been there. So if Bruno's own comments on this don't jump out at you the first time you read his books, maybe the second time around they will, provided you get in the memory dojo and put in the practice. This tension between the knowledge being completely visible and invisible at the same time is something you'll see in more places than just Bruno. It's in one of the earliest books, Rhetorica Ad Herenium, and repeated by Bruno's disciple, Alexander Dixon, in The Shadow of Reason and Judgment. When exactly along your journey you'll want to read that book is unknown to me, but a wonderful version is available that includes both a crisp and readable English translation with the original language in an edition called The Hermetic Art of Memory. In sum, memory techniques are not a spectator sport. No practice in the memory dojo of your mind, no discovery or insight into the real deal secrets Bruno embedded in his books. And that's why the answer so many people get from me when asking questions about this or that technique is usually a request from me to show me what has been done. It's almost impossible to give any guidance without evidence of taking action, because without action, the process of learning has not begun, which leads us to our next tip. Since 2012, I have received thousands of Memory Palace drawings. And that's important to learning these skills because the one exception to the rule about memory improvement not being a spectator sport is when you serve as the spectator to yourself. And for that, I have beat the same drum year after year. Draw your own memory tools, including Memory Palace networks, magnetic imagery, and any memory wheels you care to develop. Now, to my awareness, Bruno does not give this step as an instruction in any of his books, but notice how nearly every book he produced comes with illustrations. At some point, Bruno must have sketched these illustrations for the woodcut artist and book printer, or perhaps he had the necessary graphic skills himself. 
As I discussed in our video on reading comprehension strategies, drawing diagrams is a key means of understanding them. And I doubt I would have ever understood memory wheels to the point of using them if I hadn't gotten out a big piece of paper and some colored pens. And that's another tip for you. Use large spaces to draw in and multiple colors. These are laws that relate to mind mapping, which we've also covered on this channel in depth. As great as many contemporary memory improvement books are, they often counsel beginners to learn mnemonics by practicing with trivial information. I'm talking about random lists of words, long lines of digits that have no practical application in daily life, shopping lists, etc. Listen, there's a pro to every con, and certainly what I sometimes think of as dumbing down the tradition has made it possible for some people to at least get started with something. The question is, how many people stick with the program? I don't know, but we can be fairly certain that if there is a high drop-off rate, it's because the satisfaction of successfully memorizing 20 random words of little or no value quickly fades away. How is that supposed to create a dopamine spike that just keeps on giving compared to the magisterial power of memorizing a phrase in a foreign language you can use repeatedly or a line from some scripture that substantially makes you feel more enlightened? Bruno got this distinction and talked a lot about light. I believe that sense of light he practically raves about ties directly to research we have seen in recent years showing how working with meaningful and substantial information can make you feel blissful. So when Bruno discusses how he memorized key philosophical and ethical information that guided a better life, no doubt he started talking about light and enlightenment. As I talk about in the victorious mind, when I started memorizing mountains of Sanskrit, the light switched on in my head too. And since sharing those tips, apparently I'm not the only one. Of course, Bruno also demonstrates using these techniques for matters of science, like astronomical matters. And that gives you the benefit of being able to engage with others in conversations and debates, activities we now know cause the brain to produce chemicals that keep you healthy and mentally sharp. And this fact is why you need to come up with your own goals and your own images. Only this kind of material will lead you to the incredible feelings of well-being and confidence that come from using your memory in meaningful ways. Now, having a vision for leading a better life is the real challenge many people face. That topic is beyond the focus of this video, but there is a free training on this channel about creating a vision statement you're welcome to go through. Or, as I suspect, the Seal of Seals might be one of the more likely places to start with Bruno. Although some of the material is antiquated and difficult to align with the demands of modern life, forces of evolution have ensured it survives precisely because its core truths remain so valuable to all of us who strive for more from life. Let me ask you something. Do you read to understand, or do you read to find portals to further understanding? I ask because the answer is the key to the most fruitful relationship with the memory improvement books of Giordano Bruno you could have. But before unpacking this incredibly powerful point, thanks to our regular viewers for your support of this channel, and extra special thanks to our channel members and those involved with the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. You make all of this possible, and everyone in our community and on Team Magnetic appreciates it very much. If you'd like to become a channel member, that appears to be the ultimate way to help train the robots that the older aspects of this tradition still matter, and I think you'll benefit a great deal from the conversations we've been having in this private community. Unlock everything now by hitting the join button and seeing if it's right for you. Or if you just want to grab the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass and become a channel member later, that's cool too. Now then, there is a unique way to think about understanding that solves a lot of problems our society has with impatience, self-degradation, and other destructive tendencies. Understanding is not a destination. It is a process. And to really engage with the process, I suggest planning to reread Bruno's books at least twice. This suggestion stands true for many books, and there's a reason why one of the most popular posts on the Magnetic Memory Method blog talks about how to develop a rereading strategy. Because new knowledge is being created every single day, and because every new thing you read makes you aware of new things you don't know, knowledge is always a process of repetitive reconsideration. Moreover, it is a game of modesty and humility which Bruno reminds us is one of the ultimate skills. We all have a limited time on planet Earth, and in fact, we are experiencing those limits right now. Now is the only time we have, and without awareness of its passage, we're missing the very treasure we seek. There's a paradox here, because even though understanding must of necessity always remain incomplete, it is 
also always completely full in the moment, provided you're paying attention. You see, there are secrets in Bruno that will help improve your memory practice, but there is an art of combination behind which secrets will leap at whom and at which time. You need to be the combinator so that you might perceive them in a way that is meaningful for you. And that is why learning to pay attention is perhaps Bruno's greatest tip, and memory training is one of the finest ways to develop this ability and keep it sharp. Practice every day by memorizing and recalling information that actually matters, and you will train your procedural memory to pay closer attention to the now. And when all of these things combine, more of Bruno's wisdom will leap off the page and you'll experience the paradoxical delight of wondering why you didn't see it before. And to speed you along and help you develop a memory wheel, I suggest you watch or re-watch our community's video on Ars Combinatoria next.